Hello YouTubers, if you're here, you're looking for answers and you're probably suffering from something called fluoroquinolone toxicity. And I'm going to talk about this because it's a broad spectrum and it's important to talk about this because the medical community is in the dark. And when I say medical community, I'm talking about the prescribers, the doctors that you go to see that will treat your reaction to ciproflax and don't understand what they're treating, so they will often mistreat you. Um, and misdiagnose your problems, and in some cases, like mine, make it much worse. So, and I'm going to explain. Um, so, what we're talking about here falls under a whole lot of different names. So, let's let's cover the topics first, so we, we're all on the same page, and I and you're watching a video that you should be watching. So, fluoroquinolone toxicity has a lot of different names, including FQADS, which is fluoroquinolone um, associated syndrome or disorder syndrome, um, ciproflaxin toxicity. Uh, Levoflaxin toxicity, uh, gataflaxin toxicity, moxiflaxin, oxiflax or offloaxin, and uh, norfloxin. So all the drugs that are in the flora uh, quinlan family, you add the word toxicity to the back end of it, that could be the reaction that you're having. So if you are, that's what we're talking about here. So just to briefly just to explain what we're talking about, the fluoroquinolones are a family of uh, broad spectrum antibiotics, uh, which eradicate bacteria. And what they do is they interrupt the, the bacteria's DNA. And when they do that, they prevent it from replicating. And that is essentially how it dies off because they don't have a long life if they're not able to replicate. Now, the problem with that is it damages your own cells. Um, and it can cause some reactions in some people. Some people can take this medication multiple times and not have any reaction at all. Some people can take it one time and have a severe reaction. So, and a lot of that depends on who you are and what your history is. And we're going to talk about that. So, um, fluoroquinolones, the entire family of antibiotics are just a regular antibiotic and they add fluoride to them. So this allows the, the antibody, or I'm sorry, the antibiotic to penetrate much deeper into your cells, which is why it's used for a multitude of problems, but mostly deep tissue uh, problems where blood flow is, is not necessarily good. So deep in your tendons, um, uh, respiratory infections, urinary tract infections, sinitis, um, abdominal, they treat it for uh, typhoid fever, anthrax. Uh, j uh, bone and joint infections, uh, STDs, um, and I'm sure there's more that they prescribe it for, unfortunately. Um, and most of the prescribers have no idea what the damage is that they're doing. And there are multiple uh, FDA black box uh, warning labels on this uh, medication that are unheated. And we'll talk about that in a second. So uh, just generally speaking, it's there seems to be just from anecdotally what I'm watching on these videos on YouTube is people are trying to figure this out are being turned away by their doctors because it is very hard to diagnose because it doesn't show up in a lot of blood tests unless they do a targeted blood test, which they will not do unless they know what they're looking for. Um, and they don't know what they're looking for. So this is often misdiagnosed as tendinopathy. And what I'm talking about is one of the telltale symptoms that you're gonna get is pain in your tendons. So I took this three doses. So I was taking it 12 hours apart, 500 milligrams HCL. And um, my third dose, as soon as I took my third dose, I went to bed and um, I, I was up all night. I was in so much pain. Um, immediately, I had stiffening of the joints and tendons. Um, and it was, it was painful, but it was uncomfortable as well. And there was a lot of other things that went about it. And I'll, and I'll talk about symptoms here in a minute. But what particularly I'm going to talk about um, my symptoms because I can't talk about other people's symptoms. Um, but I'm going to talk generally about some of the warnings with this medication. Um, so I don't want to gloss over that. Um, so you understand that you could be in real danger with this medication. There's all kinds of crazy stuff that happens with this retinal detachment, aortal uh, aneurysms, uh, brain aneurysms, strokes, heart attacks, um, tendon rupture, is one of them. It's one of the most common, but it's almost one of the minor ones in comparison um, to some of these other insane side effects. Um, the danger of this is, in my opinion, the cascading effects. Let's say you get this, you don't really understand what you're dealing with, and then you, you know, your body's in an adverse state already, and you, you rupture a tendon. Now you're in the hospital, and you're getting 
surgery to replace that. You're, you're going through anesthesia, now you're on pain meds, and maybe another antibiotic or a continuation of the antibiotic that they don't understand even fully that caused this. So this could quickly lead to much, much worse, I dare say, fatal conditions. So um, let's talk about how this medication, according to the FB, FDA guidelines, is supposed to be prescribed. So when it is prescribed, they're supposed to have three criteria. First, they're supposed to confirm that you, through a, a lab test, that you have a bacter uh, bacterial infection. I didn't in my case. They just prescribed it. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second when I get done with this short list. Um, so first, they're supposed to confirm that you have a bacterial infection. Second, it is a last resort antibiotic, meaning they have given you doxycycline or penicillin or something else that did not work. This is supposed to be a last resort medication, and that is because of the danger that you're in when you take it. And when they do give it to you as a last resort, they are supposed to carefully screen your antibiotic history. Now, because they use fluoride, um, it's a heavy metal that accumulates in your body, and it is a, um, uh, let me go back up and read exactly, it is a known neurotoxin. And it is designed specifically to penetrate deep into your tissues, including passing the nerve uh, barrier, which is why it has such adverse effects. So if you have, like for instance, I had a bad case of MRSA when I was in the army. Um, I got it in Afghanistan on a jiu-jitsu mat, I think, and it took me about 18 months. It was a very long case of having um, MRSA. And they prescribed me a bevy of drugs that I didn't even keep track of. I didn't pay attention. I trusted the doctors. Now... I recovered from all that and my, my MRSA has um, you know, gone away. I haven't had a case in years, but that was five, six, maybe even seven years ago that the end of that was going on. And I'm a very healthy, very active guy, eat natural whole foods, drink tons of water, don't drink soda. Um, and years later, I was given this, this medic medication for a possible uh, UTI. That was unconfirmed. They did not screen my medical history. I had this reaction, and I told them that I had this medical medical history. I told them I had been prescribed multiple MRSA medications for a long period of time, and it just right over their head. They didn't even consider it. So after about a week and a half of dealing with the, you know, not being able to walk and in some pretty severe pain, it was starting to lessen. I was actually able to get up and walk around. I was able to stand up at the oven and cook my food. I was able to stand and brush my teeth in the mirror. Um, and I was trying really hard not to let myself go into, you know, an, um, an atrophy state. Um, so I was trying to maintain some bone and muscle density, you know, because even after a week, you start, you know, seven days, you start getting weak and, and thinner. Um, it was at that time my doctor decided that I should have been much better, and she put me on um, 30 milligrams of prednisone a day for five days, um, and NSAIDs, round-the-clock NSAIDs. So what I found out about a week later, well, I'm sorry, let me, let me backtrack. It was about two weeks later. After I took this initial round of prednisone, the first five days, I was much worse. It was much worse. I was in much more pain. Um... I could not walk at all or stand. I could not bear my weight. And it wasn't just my legs. It was my wrists. So I, I couldn't even push off the ground. I had used my knuckles to push. So reading, doing a lot of reading on this, what it does, is it disrupts your RNA, mRNA. When it does that, it alters your DNA in such a way that they are unable to, your body is unable to produce um, collagen, which is what provides the elasticity um, and lubrication to your joints. Now, without that, it's hard to heal them. So you get in a state where you're not healing. Um, it's not inflammation, and they will often treat you for tendinopathy. This is not tendinopathy. Tendinopathy is a symptom of the real problem. And if you do prescribe either NSAIDs or prednisone, do not take them. It will absolutely make this much worse and possibly irreversible. So avoid that shit at all um, tell your doctor to do some research. Do not take it. If you have to get a different doctor, one that will listen to you and one that will read up on this. Mine wouldn't. She told me she did. And after a week of taking this, I took a week or it was about four days of not taking the prednisone. I started to improve a little bit, but not very much. And then she put me back on prednisone and she did what's called a prednisone surge. So originally I was on 30 milligrams a day in the morning with a meal and that was all. 
Um, then when I when she put me back on it, she surged it. So I was taking 50 milligrams for two days, 40 milligrams for two days, 30 milligrams, then 20, then one milligram, and then half a milligram was the prescription. But I took the first day 50 milligram dose and immediately I knew something was wrong. I was in enormous pain. Um, again, everything was much worse. I couldn't walk. I couldn't get around the house. Um, at all. I was able to kind of stand to push myself up into bed. Uh, I couldn't do that anymore. Now I was on the living room floor in a pallet because I couldn't uh, get around. And this went on for six days. I continued to listen to my doctor um, and, and take the prednisone. I had stopped taking the NSAIDs because I could palpably feel, I knew without a doubt that it was making my pain worse. And we had a discussion in the interim. So between the two doses and she said she looked this up. No, she didn't. Because when you look it up, it is crystal clear. You do not prescribe NSAIDs. You do not prescribe um, prednisone, in particular prednisone, to treat uh, fluoroquinolone toxicity. And you do not take SSRIs while you're having this. And I'll get into that in a second, why you do not. So if you are taking SSRIs uh, for whatever you're taking them for, and you think, no, I, I have to have those. I'm gonna talk about this in a second. You, you're gonna realize that you should stop immediately taking those. And there's gonna be a lag that it's gonna take a minute to get out of your system. You need to talk to your doctor right away about what's happening to you. You need to talk to your mental health provider about what's happening to you. I would encourage you to get a hold of a pharmacist, um, uh, a senior pharmacist that'll talk to your doctor if, if your doctor is unaware. But let me, ex let me uh, get down here a little bit and, and talk to you about um, some of the symptoms that I had, I'm going to be brutally honest with you about this because I think it's very important. So the, the tendinopathy was the thing you're going to notice the most. It is almost impossible to move around. Your joints feel like they're, um, you know, made of dried wood. Everything was popping and snapping. I could feel, you know, in my neck and my, um, I'm going to start from the top down. Um, the tendinopathy was almost everywhere in my body. So it was in my behind my eyes. I wear glasses sometimes to, to see things far away. It felt like someone else's prescription when I put them on. Um, my eyes hurt to look around. Only later did I realize that you can have a retinal detachment. So in essence, this fluoride toxicity, this fluoroquinolone toxicity, or whatever name you want to call it, which by the way is, so, is why it's so hard for doctors to diagnose, because it's not under one umbrella. It can be under whatever medicine you're prescribed, which dilutes your search results when you try to find out and discover what is happening to you. So, uh, kind of lost my place there, sorry. Um, the, the, you're going to get what's called peripheral um, neuropathy, which is, means at the sites of pain, it's going to cause nerve damage. Peripherally, like I said earlier, it does cross the nerve barrier and causes damage to those nerves, um, which is going to cause an extraordinary amount of pain. Um, and when I say extraordinary amount of pain, I mean extraordinary. So on a level of t 1 to 10, I was at an 8 and a 9. Um, and I've had some really terrible things happen to me. I broke both my legs and my hip in a, in a parachute accident, which took a long time to recover. I was hit by a truck crossing the road doing 25 miles an hour, almost killed me, had to recover from that. I've had some really painful, horrific things happen to me, and I've come out on top and dealt with the pain. None of it was like this. This was a unique type of pain. Um, so just in general, where I had pain, I'm going to go through my list here, starting from the head down, eyes. Um, ears, um, neck, all these tendons in your neck, you, you just, you almost can't find a comfortable position. It, it's, it's 24 hours a day, excruciation, or excruciating, um, and you just cannot find a way to relax yourself or get comfortable. Right now, as I'm sitting here, I'm in a level two or three uh, pain. It doesn't go away. Um, a lot of the major tendons and muscles in my back, especially between my shoulder blades, just felt like um, they were ripped. It, it was excruciating all day. I, I would literally lay on the floor and cry because, I, I mean, it, this was two, three weeks in. Without the pain going away, um, it would just get horrible. Um, back of my wrists, back of my hands, uh, even in my chest all the inner tendons in your pelvis that you normally use for walking away or for walking and supporting your body weight. Um, knees, both the front and back, sounded like they were made of gravel and they hurt to move. All my joints were popping. Um, so, and when you're looking out for, you know, tendon rupture, that's, that's a scary sound because it's not a subtle one when this happens. When you're going through this, your, your joints will pop loudly. 
take it easy. If you are moving around, you, you need to minimize your movements. There's a thing called end of range motion, and that's where you take your joint to full range on anything. You're going to have to cut that in half. Anytime you do any movements, especially if you're walk, if you are crawling around like I was doing, you, you, and I'm still doing, I'm still crawling around like a toddler. I'm, I'm on my butt and scooting myself along with my knuckles. I have to use gloves because my knuckles get so beat up. And of course, I'm in a state where I don't heal very well. So I'll go to bed with my knuckles all bruised up, wake up the next day in the same case. So, you know, movement then becomes painful. Um, crawling. I've, I had to get knee pads to help with that, but the knee pads are hard. And of course, those hurt as well. It just shifts the pain to somewhere else for a little while, which can kind of make it bearable. Um, and of course, your ankles and, and Achilles tendon are going to hurt really bad too. I was getting um, really bad headaches. Um, and they would be rapid onset, rapid offset, meaning that it was almost like a car going by. Um, the pain would hit, ah, and then go away. And which is weird. It's, it's, it's hard to describe to somebody. Um, and of course, if people or if your family members are watching you go through this, they look over at you and you're gritting your teeth as waiting for this shit to pass. Um, I talked about the eye pain. The ear pain was almost identical to my headaches. It felt like someone stabbed me in the ear with an ice pick and I mean, almost unbearable, but it would only last about a second or two. So before I could even make a noise, it would be gone. Um, and then you'd just be, oh, um, armpits, armpits are red and irritated, um, and itchy constantly. Uh, and I'll talk about what that, I think that is in a minute. Heart palpitations, body odor increased substantially. I'm not a smelly guy. Um, normally I can go all day without deodorant and just kind of get that manly BO smell towards the end of the day. Not with this. I'd get out of the bath an hour later. I would smell like I had been out in the sun all week. Um, heart palpitations. I talked about that. Um, one of the side effects to this is because it's a connective tissue, um, disease and it, or symptom or syndrome or whatever you want to call it. When it does attack, um, it can cause all kinds of problems with connective tissue. Uh, some of those are in your heart, which is why one of the FDA warnings for this is uh, aortal uh, aneurysms. So I was very cognizant trying to keep my heart low, not to do any type of anything strenuous. Uh, m muscle waste is a big part of this. I've gone from a muscular fit looking man to very shriveled up. Um, I've lost a lot of body weight and body mass. Um, but I'm going to talk about two of the worst aspects of this beyond the pain even is the absolute severe anxiety I got. Um, I could not calm myself down. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm, I, I was in the army for 24 years. I have had eight combat deployments. Um, PTSD is something that almost all of us suffer with. So I'm familiar with anxiety, okay? This was worse than most of the anxiety I'm, I'm used to suffering from. Um, Again, just like the pain, I could not shut it off. And, and here's what's worse. And I'm going to be very honest about this because it's important. I was having constant suicidal thoughts and thoughts that were, dis, you know, disparaged. You know, I couldn't think that I was going to get over this. It felt like my life was over. Um, and I knew that I'm not, a, I know I'm not a suicidal person. I would never kill myself. Yet I could not shut these thoughts off that I wanted to kill myself. And I was, there was this internal struggle that I had to deal with that I was telling myself, no, 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 no. And I had never grabbed anything and, and attempted to, but it was this constant conversation in my head about, you need to stop thinking about this. You need to distract yourself. And it was almost impossible to do, um, which is its own form of torture, especially when you're going through pain at that level and your family's looking at you and, you know, in despair and upset and not understanding what's happening. It just, it's a cascading um, set of effects. So be mindful of that. Be patient. Let it pass. It's going to pass um, and you're going to even out. But that was one of the worst aspects of it to me. So we've talked a little bit about this, but I'm going to continue on what to avoid. Absolutely. Now, the first three are the FDA warnings, the absolute avoids, the prednisone, which is a steroid to bring down the inflammation and to assist with healing of tendinopathy, which you don't have. I mean, you have it as they categorize it, but it's you do not. If most of these blood tests, all my blood tests came back negative for inflammation. So all the inflammation markers that they look for in your blood tests, I didn't have. And she knew that. And she still prescribed me prednisone. 
and the NSAIDs. So the second thing you are, are to avoid is NSAIDs. The third is SRIs, like I said. Um, caffeine, avoid it. Your nervous system is already jacked up. You don't want to aggravate it. Um, sugar, sugar has a terrible effect on your nervous system. It also taxes your kidneys. It spikes your insulin levels, which also affects your kidneys. So um, as much as you can, absolutely resist all forms of sugar. Um, with one exception, I'll get to that here in a minute. This is going to throw your stomach off too, so try to avoid artificial sugars. Part of the problem with this is it affects your, um, your collagen production, which affects your ability in your stomach to, your lining, so your, your ability to absorb things are, and nutrients are, are greatly disrupted. So you don't want to add to that by having things that already do that. You're no longer in a normal state, and you're going to hear that term a lot by doctors. Well, normally that wouldn't do that, but you're no longer in a normal state. So one of the problems, like I talked about, is your inability to absorb magnesium and your inability to create um, collagen. Now, this is all as I understand it from the reading. Now, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a nurse. This is just me reading stuff. And I've had a couple doctors tell me already that I have a pretty good understanding of what's happening here. And that's by no means an endorsement. I'm just talking here. <sighs> Refined carbohydrates. They essentially have the exact same effect on your body as sugar. Um, obviously, that means junk food. Now, you're sitting at home, you're unable to do shit, you're pissed off, you're frustrated, you want to grab some comfort foods. Don't do it. They're not comfort foods. They're poison. Right now, in the state that you're in, they're going to make everything worse. Don't do it. Suck it up. Eat healthy food. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about everything you make or, you, or someone makes for you is homemade. There's no barcodes on anything you eat. It wasn't made in a factory or a plant. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about um, foods in a moment. Um, avoid excessive sodium, at least initially, um, because your kidneys are affected by this. We don't know to what degree. Um, it, it varies enormously based off of you and your genetics and your diet pre-ciproflaxin toxicity or fluoroquinolone toxicity and post. So um, the other thing, obviously alcohol. I mean, if you're drinking on this, you know, you got problems. Um, if you're having this reaction, you're drinking. You need to, you need to, dump all your alcohol down the drain. Marijuana. Um, I am a daily smoker now that I'm retired from the military. I live in Alaska. It's illegal. Um, it helps me with anxiety. It helps me um, with my mood. And I like it. It's fun. But uh, with this, it seems to magnify the pain. It seems to magnify the anxiety um, to a small degree, the anxiety, but the pain, it absolutely, in my case, makes it much worse. It'll take, you know, my constant state right now is a two or a three. If I try to use marijuana at all, um, it's going to elevate that to a five or a six right out of the gate. So and I have only done it a couple times in the last month. Um, you know, and almost always when I was feeling really good, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to sit back and watch a movie since I can't do anything else. And I'm going to smoke a doob and sit here and chill out. That'll turn your day into a nightmare. So don't do it. All right, let's talk about foods that, uh, this is partly a nutritional issue, um, on the rebound side of this. So what you want to do is you want to find foods that are going to help you detoxify your body. And there's a lot of things you can look up. It's a lot of articles you can read, and I have been doing almost nothing but that since I've been bedridden, essentially. So I'm sitting in a chair right now so I can make this video, but it hurts. It hurts to sit here. It hurts my hamstrings. It hurts the tendons in my leg, but there's no other way to do this. Um, and frankly, I'm just getting used to the constant pain. <sighs> so moving on. Foods that are going to help you. Obviously, low sugar, low carb no refined carbs, um, high in protein, high in fat, high in omegas, um, high in collagen and macronutrients. Um, so you want things that are high in potassium and that are going to be high in magnesium, not too much potassium. Magnesium, according to doctors, you really can't have enough of it. And if you do, you're going to start having some diarrhea. And that's your indicator that you got too much of it. Now, initially, I was taking um, a lot of um, Epsom salt baths to help with the pain. And it would sometimes help and it would sometimes make it worse. I, I've told my doctor about this. She said there that you cannot take too many Epsom salt baths. Au contraire, according to their own website, um, you can. You're not supposed to exceed a certain limit. 
um, for Epsom salt baths. There is a transdermal exchange occurring with the magnesium. That's how it benefits you. Anybody tells you they don't, don't understand. I mean, if, it, if there wasn't, it wouldn't do anything for you. So your body is taking in magnesium through the skin, which is the transdermal exchange. Now, when I was in these baths, sometimes they would help soothe the aching and the muscle pain. Sometimes I think the pain was caused due to the tightness in the tendons, but also because the muscles aren't being used. They're not being stretched and, sh you know, muscles that don't get stretched um, shorten and shrink. So you're, you're now dealing with muscles that are pulling on your sore tendons. So I think in a way they were helping with the muscle relax, but also hurting the, the tendons. So I think you have to experiment with it yourself. There is a limit to how many you can take, so make sure you're being cognizant. That. That's why I bring it up. So back to the foods. Sorry, I got distracted there. Avocados. First, let me explain why avocados and, and a lot of these foods I'm going to mention. Boron is a naturally occurring mineral, and it helps attach to the fluoride in your system and helps you excrete it. It's a very hard thing to get rid of. Boron in these foods attaches and helps you pee them out and sweat them out, which is, I think, why my armpits are in a constant state of, uh, well, and you got lymph nodes there too. Um, uh, they're just, they're constantly aggravated. So these lymph nodes here in my throat were, would sometimes swell up really bad. My mouth would go extraordinarily dry if I ate the wrong thing. Um, and when I say my mouth would go dry, it makes dry mouth sound wet. I mean, it felt like I took a mouthful of talcum powder and it felt like Darth Vader was squeezing my throat for the next two or three hours. I could swallow, I could eat just fine, but the tightness and the pain in my throat was almost unbearable. It was one of the worst things. It still happens if I turn my neck a little bit too tight to, to talk to my wife or look at the TV. Um, sometimes if I look up too much, this will all get really tight and really uh, aggravated. Um, it's getting better as time goes on, but um, something to keep an eye out for. And if you're having foods that are causing that, back off from them, um, at least initially. So back to boron. Avocados have about two to three milligrams in each avocado, depending on the size of it. That's a, that's a good amount, um, as you'll see. And I'll read off these amounts. Kidney beans. Um, kidney beans have two and a half milligrams um, of boron per serving. Dried nuts. So I am eating dried nuts constantly with every meal all through the day peanuts cashews brazil nuts uh, macadamians walnuts everything in there peanuts dried peanuts you know try to get the ones that are low in sodium and not the roasted ones don't because you don't want the sugar added to it just eat them so i'm eating them in the morning i'm eating them in the afternoon i'm eating at night a little bit with each meal um, to assist with this constant detox state that i'm in fresh caught salmon Salmon, not some, not some farm salmon that's got red dye in it and it's not very healthy. You want natural, fresh caught salmon. Why? It's high in vitamin D, it's high in omegas, and it's high in protein. Um, and it's got all the good fats that your brain and nerve tissue needs to repair. Eating good amounts of protein is going to help with the muscle waste, and it's very important for your recovery. Um, when I, and when I talk about all of these things, when I, you know, my next thing I'm gonna talk about is chicken. Chicken is extremely high in collagen. It's a very fibrous meat. Excuse me. You're going to want that. That's going to help you rebuild your damaged tissues. Since your body's in a state right now where it's having a hard time creating this stuff on its own, you want to supplement through dietary means. Beef is also high in fat, which is good. Despite what you hear through the medical community, there's that's old information. Fat is good for you. That's why the keto diet is taken off. That's why the um, American Diabetes Association, the American uh, Heart Association is slowly catching up, but they are now endorsing those diets as positive for heart health. So, um, and there's, you can watch multiple documentaries and read multiple books on it um, that this is the way to go. This is how your body is designed to, to eat. Um, but you're going to want the protein. Um, cilantro. Cilantro has some um, automatic uh, detoxifying effects. Lemons. So I'm getting a lot of vitamins through the lemon. Obviously, it's also an alkali, so it's going to help break down a lot of stuff. But as far as liver and kidney detox, every glass of water I drink is got, and you can actually see the lemon seeds in there for me squeezing it in there fresh. Not, a, not some junk that was bought from the store, not a powder mix, not the squirt bottles, actual lemons. Um, and, and going with that, if your county uses 
fluoride in their water, don't drink it. You need to get, you know, a water filter. I don't know what, a Brita, a Zero Water, I'm not endorsing any particular brand, but you need to find one that has a 99.9, .9, which is what they're all going to say for a maximum effect of removal of fluoride. That's the water you need to drink. Um, don't add to the problem. You can't detoxify while you're toxifying. So avoid reverse osmosis water um, or ultra purified water because that will strip minerals out of your water. It'll also create an, ac uh, an, an acid state. So reverse osmosis water, we can debate whether or not it's good for you later, but whether or not it's good for you right now, it's probably not. A, acidate, it acidates your body and it, it strips you of minerals that you need. Um, one of the other things I'm going to recommend you have um, for about a week, don't you try not to do it for too long, is uh, you know homemade bone broth. So if you don't know how to make bone broth, there are endless recipes online. Try to keep it simple, I will tell you that. Um, I'm having a shot of bone broth with a double shot glass uh, every morning with my breakfast. And uh, it's helped. It's gotten me from being in the state that I was to the state that I'm in now. So if I were to rate myself when this was in its worst, I would have said I was at maybe 20%. I was having a hard time cognitively. I couldn't think. Um, I was in constant pain, which is a horrible distraction. And of course, I couldn't move. So maybe 10, maybe 20% is even generous. Now I would say I'm at about 30 to 40%. I'm still having a hard time moving around, getting around, obviously. But my brain is fairly clear right now. I'm having some issues still that remain. Um, but I think largely my, my cognition is back. And I think that's mostly because these detox efforts have been taken. So bone broth, it's full of collagen and it's full of protein. Dark berries, raspberries and blueberries are the preferred. Um, they are full of antioxidants. So right now, if you're going through this, your body's in what's called an oxidative state. Now you've heard of free radicals. Here's what those are if you don't already know. Those are damaged cells in your body and they will replicate. These are what cause problems with, and I dare say the C word, but cancer. Those are what cause things like that. Um, and it also is just an additional thing for your body to filter out when it's already trying to filter out. So um, dark berries like raspberries and blueberries are full of antioxidants. Again, with every meal, I'm having a small bowl um, to help get rid of the, the toxins in my body. Um, blueberries and raspberries essentially are even. They have the same level of nutrients in them. However, blueberries have less or I'm sorry, more, much more sugar, almost twice as much. So, and of course, we're trying to avoid sugar right now. So raspberries are the better choice. Dark lettuce, spinach, kale, all of those are detoxifying and are high in um, all your minerals, all your essential minerals, all your micronutrients that you need. Supplementation. So one of the things that was an absolute godsend and something I've never even attempted to use before with CBD. And I'm talking not about the oral, I'm talking about topical. When I was at my worst in, um, in the pain, my wife would rub me down with uh, um, CBD oil. And I've got one here. Give me just a second. Sorry about this. All right. <clears throat> This is not an endorsement of a brand. I don't want to give a crap about any of that stuff. I'm just showing you what I'm using here. I'm using double strength, freeze pain, 2000 milligram total CBD. And I'm rubbing this on fairly uh, generously and it is almost an immediate cessation to the pain. It really helps. And I'm taking about three baths a day right now, hot baths, soaking in them without the Epsom salt because of the mixed results that I had with it. And immediately when I get out, I dry off and I put this stuff on. Tops of my hands, my wrists, all around my neck. I'm putting on the back of my knees, the front of my knees. And it is an almost immediate um, relaxation of the pain. It's going to bring it from an 8 down to a 5 if you're in your worst state. It's going to bring it from a 5 to a 2 or 3 um, if you're like where I'm at right now. And right now I'm at um, almost 5 weeks. So come set, today is Thursday. On Saturday, this will be five weeks of this shit. So mineral spray, I've seen in some other YouTube videos that it helps. There's some pure mineral spray that you can get on Amazon. It's not very expensive. By the way, I went through, I was going through at least one of these a week. Um, at, when it was really bad, I was going through two, sometimes even three of these a week. And that's expensive. These are $100 a bottle, sometimes $120 a bottle, depending on how much... Uh, uh, CBD, what the strength of it is. Sometimes you get 5,000, sometimes 1,000. This is a 2,000 milligram. 
Um, I found it for $120. My wife was out rounding this stuff up and a lot of places were sold out. Um, but um, if this is going on, get to a store, get someone to get to a store and get you some. It's going to make an enormous difference for you. Or at least I hope it does. So magnesium, I'm taking magnesium uh, supplementation every day. Um, I'm taking zinc, vitamin C. I'm taking a thing called L-tyrosine, um, which you can find on Amazon. It's cheap. It's like $9, $10 a bottle. And it helps with um, your nerves, including you know your brain, your central nervous system, your peripheral nervous system. It's going to help relax those a little bit. Um, along that same line, this was just recently prescribed. So when I was talking about that doctor I had, I got a new doctor. I was able to do that. And um, this new doctor did some research before we sat down and talked. And one of the things she came back with, and I'm not going to even try to pronounce this because I'm going to butcher the shit out of it, is this stuff. Um, oh, it's on mirror, isn't it? So it's uh, A-C-E-T-Y-L-L-C-A-R-N-I-T-I-N-E. Acetyl L-carnitine. Anyway, this is a 100-gram bottle. I've been taking one gram per day with meals and it's i've only been taking a couple days um, but if you read about this stuff it's amazing everybody should be taking it anyway there's almost no negative side effects um, but it does all kind they use it for people with dementia and alzheimer's to restore brain and nerve function they use it for people's spinal cord injuries brain damage from traumatic brain injury um, it, it restores gut health um, it it's used for all type of um um, reproductive states uh, for both men and women, erectile dysfunction. I mean, there's almost no downside to this, but it is like a super drug. It helps everything. It helps. It, and it, one of the things it does is it increases mitochondrial um, production. So it increases your energy, energy levels naturally. This is something that your body already produces, but you may not be producing enough of it. So fluoride is a neurotoxin, but it's also a um, endocrine blocker. So it's going to prevent some certain hormones from being able to be created as freely and in normal uh, amounts as they would be. So supplementing is important, getting that stuff in your body to help replenish itself. Um, and I think that's what prolongs this whole thing. Your body can't produce the things that it normally would that would allow it to heal. So that's why taking this stuff, the right supplementation, is so important. Now, um, I'm also taking uh, a mushroom complex, which, you know, isn't really... Um, verified by anybody. It's just anecdotal information you can get from people that'll say it does help, it doesn't help. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't hurt. Um, so I'm getting a, I think it's a 12 mushroom complex of all the major uh, mushrooms. You need to make sure that you're getting a quality one with no fillers. You don't want a bunch of junk in there. Um, so you need, to, you need to research anything that you're going to buy. You, you need to make sure it's got the laboratory certification on all of it. So you want to go into the website and read about it. Now this is important because you don't want to be taking something that's making you worse. So um, moving on, that's all the prepared information I have. So I didn't want to get on here and just ramble on. I wanted to get on here and give you information that has been vetted, um, you know, that I, I've been doing all this research, but I'm talking with my new doctor about it. Um, I'm talking with a patient advocate who's doing a lot of research behind the scenes about this. I'm there's some research centers, or I'm sorry, not research, but treatment centers around America. You can find them online. Um, there's one in California I know about, and I got online and I did some reading there and it's where a lot of, a lot of this information comes from. And surprisingly enough, all of these, uh, treatment facilities that I found are run by doctors who had this happen to them and got to suffer all of this horrible shit. And as a doctor, they didn't understand what's happening to them. And the doctors that were treating them didn't understand how to treat them. So as doctors, they took it upon themselves to figure out what is going on and to create these treatment centers. So um, you can find these guys online. If you're looking this up, you probably have. They're probably in your search results right now. Um, 